Okay, thank you to those who were able to join us in the first session and coming back again to the second session. I think you should. <laughs> and um, I'm Joy Ajipon from Ghana, and I'm the, one of the co-leaders co for the sustainable space. Our second session, sorry, is going to look at the panel discussion with uh, climate change, civil engineering, and butterflies. A panel on how to dis how to cover environmental sustainability topics on wiki pro Wikimedia projects. We have three amazing panelists, and to start with, we have Phoebe, who is an English Wikipedian from the U.S. She's going to talk on climate information on Wikipedia, and I think Phoebe was in a haste to sit on her seat, so she's okay. here. That's Phoebe. The next person is Anaya. She's a Bengali Wikipedian from India. And she's going to talk about Wiki loves butterflies. So Anaya, please join us. OK. <laughs> the next person, or the last person, is Derek Chan, right? He is an English and Cartoonist Wikipedian from the United Kingdom. And he's also going to talk about the best practices for environment engineering on Wikipedia. So I think we have a very rich panelist sitting out here. And we'll be grateful if they could just give a little start on what their background is and why they are with the environmental space. Sure. OK. Um, should I start? Do you? Okay, um, so I just came from the quality space, uh, which is in the other building uh, far away. And uh, this is really a talk about quality. Do you want us all to talk about our background within the environment first before I begin with this? Uh, a little bit. I am interested in this topic. Uh, I think it's one of the most important things that we could do in Wikipedia. So I will uh, try to uh, share that with you today. Um, yeah. Did you, okay. sorry, did you want us to go as a panel to all discuss, or um, shall I continue with the talk? No, you can. Okay. No, she can. Okay, okay. okay. And do you want to talk about why you're giving this talk? Uh, I just want that uh, PPT. Uh, why, can uh, we start first? Yes, yeah, let us give all our talks and then we will talk <laughs> okay. as we go yeah. about why we are doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So um, it's too complicated to discuss at the same time. So, so my name is Phoebe. I am a librarian. I am a Wikipedian. Uh, I came from the quality space and this is a talk about quality. Uh, Except that as I was writing this talk about quality, uh, it became a talk about trying to convince you all of something that I think we need to do. So it shifted as I was writing it. But I want to talk about how we approach climate change on Wikipedia. I'm not an expert in climate change. I am not a scientist. What I am is a science librarian, and so I do a lot of reading in science. I read papers, I work with researchers. I'm also a Wikipedian, and have been for a long, long time. And I am also a citizen of this planet, right? And so, you know, I care about the topics that affect all of us. Um, I'm also interested in how we do outreach around Wikipedia, how we do outreach around quality and making Wikipedia articles better. So let's think about our context here, our history, which is also, I think, the context of this panel because we're talking about three big initiatives for improving you know, different kinds of content. Um, in 2001, the third IPCC report had just been released. They were like, yeah, climate change, global warming, it's, uh, yeah, we've really determined it's, it's a thing, it's important. Al Gore in the US was still going around giving his big slideshow on like international stages, but there was not a movie yet. 
and we started Wikipedia. It's 18 years later. 18 years is a long time in the geopolitical context. It feels super short. I was editing Wikipedia 16 years ago, and it seems like it has gone by in the blink of an eye, but it's a long time. Uh, now, there's lots of talk about the climate crisis on the international stage, in the US, around the world, certainly in Europe. There's been five more, uh, or there's been five total IPC report, CC reports, and also the special report. Um, and every day, right, there are stories about some terrible thing happening in the environment related to climate change. Also, we are the biggest source of information. So we are the largest encyclopedia that has ever existed in the history of the world on all topics. And uh, I, my pitch to you is I think we have some responsibility to get this topic right. Um, I wanted to share a tiny bit of data. This graph is hard to read, but it's about three articles. Global warming, the article global warming in English, the article climate change in English, and the article climate change mitigation in English. So I looked at the equivalent articles across six languages and their page views. Global warming gets by far the most page views in every language. Climate change gets half of those page views in every language. Uh, when I told this to you yesterday, Alex, I was wrong. I got it backwards. Uh, this article, Climate Change Mitigation, one, it only exists in 13 languages, and it gets micro views in comparison, right? So people are looking at these articles. They're not necessarily looking at the whole breadth of all of the articles. And how many articles are there? There's somewhere between 1,500 to 2,000 in English, depending on how you count, whether you look at the categories, whether you look at what's tagged for the wiki project, et cetera. This does not count all the sections and articles that could be about climate change, like the section in the article about coral reefs, the section in an article uh, about a butterfly species that could say, what are the impacts of climate change on this species, right? Uh, many other sections don't exist. Oh, so there's a lot of ambiguity, of course, in how things are categorized and tagged. And so my first research question was, how do we know what the quality is? And it's, um, it's super hard to know. Uh, we don't have a good global quality analysis process or tool on English until one week ago. There was not a dedicated wiki project about climate change. It was a task force, which means that the ratings, you can't ca categorize the ratings in the same way. There's not like a rating table. Um, uh, there's only a couple featured articles in English. I concentrated on English because it is my language and the only one that I can do this kind of work in, but I encourage everyone to look at your languages. So what I did is I read articles. Um, the quality is not great, right? Articles are long. They're duplicative. They uh, are inconsistently tagged. They're inconsistently updated. Um, there's a lot of advertising. There's not so many active editors. And we all know what articles should be, right? They should be readable. They should be scientifically accurate. They should have a global perspective. And I would argue for this audience in particular, they should be present in all languages. This is a global, global issue. I'll come back to illustrations. But it's hard. It's hard because these articles are hard to write. The article about climate change is, you know, very long, super technical, uh, and you need a lot of expertise. It's also controversial. There's sanctions on English around these articles. There's a lot of debate. Um, and it's hard because unlike so many of the things that we do, there is a deadline with this one, right? So 12 years to act, they say. I think this is an overwhelming problem. When I look at these 2,000 articles, when I tried to do some quality assessment, I found myself overwhelmed. Um, and so my proposal to this conference is that we make a campaign across languages around the world to work on climate change. And that we follow the models of past campaigns, that we follow the models of Wiki Project Madison and Wikipedia 1.0 and Wikipedia Women in Red because we know how to get experts involved and get people working on a single topic that 
can bring people in. Um, we need to build infrastructure, we need to build a wiki project, so cross languages, we need to make a list of core articles, and we need to make bibliographies, and we need to figure out how to bring scientists and NGOs in. There are many interested people. These are tough, tough topics to work on, right? Um, I would argue that we need to follow in the footsteps of Wiki Project Medicine, writing short articles that can be translated into many, many uh, languages that are peer reviewed. And I would also say there's just a lot of editing, old school article editing to work on that's uh, working on merges, splits, you know, navigation, quality, point of view, bias, all that stuff. I work at MIT. I'm a librarian at MIT. It's one of the great universities of the world. Many of us have many connections with scientific organizations, universities. Uh, we need to bring in our experts um, to work on technical communication, translation, uh, peer review. And they can work on figures, too. So this is a scientist from, uh, I think she's in the UK, but she's from the Netherlands. Anyway. Her contribution is like improving the figures in climate change articles. This is from the talk page of the project. So. Can you say what the project is called? It's in English, it's Wiki Project Climate Change. And it's yeah. one week old. It was a task force of Wiki Project Environment, like a sub page, and we made it a new project. So, cool. uh, yeah. I want to give a shout out to Wikimedia South Africa. They had an edit-a-thon just like last week, uh, they brought in experts, they edited 52 articles. Um, they think it's the first edit-a-thon on climate change in Africa, maybe the world. I don't know if there are others. And I want to leave time for my colleagues to talk about these related projects, because everything we do related to the environment touches climate change, of course, right? There are impacts everywhere. and so. I will turn it to you, but I will say, if we discuss this, I want to know how we could do it. What are our next steps? How would we coordinate? What are, who would we reach out to? How would we organize? Like, how can we write these articles? So, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. Just to make a quick connection. Yep. This morning, talking about who we should uh, reach out to, John Cummings created the wall to your right and to our left with us. And he'll create the write up, and also will be the people that we need to talk to, for example. Ah, okay. <laughs> we start here. All right, thank you very much. I will pass it to talk about what he loves about butterflies. Yeah. Thank you. Just make this screen. There we go. Okay, but the video is? Hmm? I need the video. The video is first. Uh, yeah, this is the the journey of Wikilove's butterfly through the avenue of butterfly nature and Wikipedia. And I want to sh show you the small teaser of a video. Afterwards, maybe next year, we will launch a full film on butterfly. Let's see.
So today I'm going to talk about uh, butterflies uh, with the relationship with Wikimedia. And the first slide is why are butterflies are valuable? Uh, they are the actually healthy indicator of environment and environmental issues. Then uh, environmental benefits for the pollination. They help in pollination and uh, control the uh, control the plants, the number of plants and important element for food chain and widely used as an ecologist as a model for decreasing uh, the decreasing the number of species in climate changes. So they have lots of uh, benefits in nature of uh, butterflies but nowadays they are decreasing day by day the butterflies numbers because of uh, prop because of urbanization climate change and that environmental issues and in this study we have found uh, lots of butterfly who, who are in uh, like a wildlife protection act you know about this that wildlife protection act in india is 1974 they are categorize the number of butterflies the name and the species they are endangered or they are rare and they are just mm, so they are the glimpse of some butterflies who are listed under the uh, protection act we found this one schedule one because it is a uh, endangered and this is in schedule two this much push in schedule two, we found 29 numbers of species in from India right now. And this is in schedule four. So in this project, we are trying to create awareness through creating article writing and put the photos, the live butterflies photos in common so that the next generation, at least if the butterflies are not there, God forbid, then at least we are leaving the documentation and the photographs of the next generation so they can uh, see or read about this species in Wikipedia. So in this project, we are trying to trying this. And this is the butterfly. It's uh, very rare in uh, West Bengal, rather in India. With last 10 years, it sees only three times. And we are lucky enough to find this photographs so <laughs> we're trying for three years and right now we are uh, collecting 350 species from west bengal and uh, two, 200 plus article we are creating on these butterflies so let's see what happened next that's it this is the groups <laughs> who are working with this uh, butterfly project Main of these are the, uh, there are three groups. One of groups is the photographer groups. Second one who are doing the research on butterfly and lepidoptera. And third one is who are writing books on butterflies. So we made a group and uh, now they became, all they became Wikipedians. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, thank you. So nice, this is both the W and a butterfly. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 yes, was this project a collaboration between uh, like uh, Wikipedians and some research groups? Yes, or? yes. Yeah. Uh, in India it's called NCBS, uh, Natural, uh, National Institute of Cell Biology and BHNS, Bombay History of uh, Natural Science and uh, now we are moving to the northeast part, so we are collaborating with, uh, in there some uh, institute is there who are working on uh, research. So because in butterfly they are uh, very difficult to identify. When you get that, uh, I see you the photos, that if you get this open wing photo and you need that time the close wing photo then you can identify this so it's very difficult to identify that's why we are collaborating to the expert group so we click the photo and send them 
so that they can recognize, they can identify the species. And now we are trying to uh, put the subspecies level work. of our action and also how much human effort and human communication can bring us towards a goal and I think there's a good illustration and penguins will appear again even though it isn't my field of work and, and it's a good illustration of how we can make an impact so I'm Derek I have been a Wikimedian since 2004 but more recently I have become a civil engineering researcher. So the premise of my presentation is, what do you do if you are already a Wikimedian and one day you wake up to realize that you've become an expert in some kind of scientific area? Which is exactly what happened to me two years ago when I passed my um, uh, probationary review for my researcher position. I realized I have become an expert in one aspect of engineering. So. The problem here is that if we are traditional Wikimedians and Wikipedians on the big projects in particular, we're very, useful, we're very used to careful research on the sources to avoid other people deleting our work from Wikipedia. And for those of us who are specialists in any kind of scientific or sustainability related field, we are also very used to very careful research in our day jobs so that our clients or funders or end users will respect our work and we can promote our own career and have an impact. So this is the part where we need to pass a review with the citations. And the problem is, when you put these two things together, when, we're, when you're a Wikipedian who want to write about your own specialism on Wikipedia, do you have all these requirements, in fact, two sets of requirements in your brain about sourcing and about scientific language? And in front of you is a blank sheet with zero content about your field of specialism. And of course, you are doing it because one, you get paid, and two, you get paid because this is an important problem for some parts of humanity. It's important. We should get Wikimedia projects on board with what we're doing. So. Me from 10 years ago came up to me today and said, look, past you has a solution for future you. I've come to offer a solution to myself, and that is, how about we think back at how Wikipedia got started? Oh, before 2007, before Wikipedia got so professionalized, it was a process of people with some subject knowledge dumping whatever they know into the Wikimedia projects. It's, it began from the bare bones stops. And in most cases, you contribute because you are the <coughs> relative subject expert. You contribute because you think you know more than the previous person who wrote about this topic on Wikipedia. And as much as the climate change topic is under sanctions on the English Wikipedia, most scientific topics relating to environmental sustainability and climate change actually aren't that controversial. The bread and butter of environmental science is very mundane and there is good scientific consensus on any part of it. It's where only where you get into the policy and impact and trying to get a global conversation happening, that controversy happens. And the main job we, we do here should be to tackle the low hanging fruit which is to get the science right and get just enough of the science out for the reader to use. And so what I think we should do is to 
is for the expert to put their content in first because what you have in your brain is a good concept of what we should present to the rest of humanity. And citations and the brushing up of the article can come later when the article gets reworked and challenged. It's better to have bare bone content than no content. The second thing is contribute media. Lovely penguin, isn't it? So not everybody can go to a place of work. If you have expertise in any field of science, much like Phoebe talked about um, this researcher, uh, this Dutch researcher who contributed lots of graphs, um, whatever you do in your field of work, the illustrations will go a long way towards improving our content on environmental coverage. And the third point I have here is potentially controversial, but Phoebe seems to agree, um, and, and Ananya seems to agree so far. I think you can make a bigger impact by writing a new article on a broad scientific topic in a small language than on a very narrow topic on the English Wikipedia and, and potentially have a fight about it. <laughs> because small languages need big help, and if you know multiple languages, you should help by contributing to the global conversation about scientific knowledge. And my fourth point is we should make connections to the world of open science and our work on Wikidata by connecting all the dots up. Um, I've been to a few science source meets up in Cambridge. Um, we think structured data is the future of open science. You need to link up your content to Wikidata and other databases so that they're discoverable. And that way they have more impact via the connections that other Wikimedians and other scientists can build on top of your work. And for multilingual content, Wikidata also works great as a lexicon of specialist keywords. And discoverability, searchability, those are the keywords that we're looking for. So here are um, the four points in, in my talk. There's a summary, write first, cite later, contribute media, be multilingual, and connect up. And it's our turn for all of us to take action. So it's discussion time, isn't it? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so we purposefully left uh, a good amount of time, 15 minutes, I think. Yeah? Uh, or less? Yeah, be very, very bold and bright. A discussion leader who is just now learning that he's going to lead the discussion. Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. So we left a good amount of time to discuss amongst all of us. Um, so questions, comments, ideas. I will. Um, Let me go to that end. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that there is a very clear connection between all of our talks as being different areas of thinking about quality content on specialized and scientific topics, so. Yeah. I wanted to actually, can I ask a question on the panel first? Because I think yes. this is something that I, I yes. think is yes. useful for us to talk about and then we can throw it out that way. Um, <laughs> so something I've been noticing in the movement, uh, I, I, so Alex Stenson and I worked in GlamWiki for a long time at the foundation, uh, and I, I've noticed there's, we're, we're lovely amateurs. Uh, as a movement, right? Uh, but we sometimes like rehash challenges that professional communities have solved uh, at some point in their professions. And I'm wondering how that it, you think in the environmental space that challenge, it, like where does it exist? Where does your experience kind of help us better understand how to do that, uh, especially with such a pressing set of issues? So. I can start. Uh, so I'm a librarian. I said that before. Specifically, I'm a science and engineering librarian. I work with scientists. I work with engineers. What that means is one way of approaching this problem is we could do what we did, as you said, in the early, early days of Wikipedia. People might remember we looked at other encyclopedias. We looked at printed encyclopedias and we said, okay, here's a list of 20 articles, 10,000 articles that are in this encyclopedia. Do we have them all? If not, let's write them. Um, there are 
hundreds, probably thousands, of specialized reference works written by scientists on all of these topics uh, that are much, much less well known than Brockhaus and Britannica, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they are still, those specialized books are probably the best um, compilations of information in our fields. And um, so one approach is to not reinvent the wheel, but look at how other people have subdivided and divided the field uh, and written about it um, as, a, as, a, as a start. Um, I think another way is to try and work with existing open projects. There are many open naturalist projects, many open, there's a big community of engineers interested in open science and open engineering, um, and they're Wikipedians, they just don't know it, right? So, if we can go to them. But what's been your experience working with the professionals looking at butterflies? Uh, actually, my topic is very specific. And I'm approaching them, though have the, the specific interest. So personally, I did not face any problem not doing this project, actually. Because this is very specific, that's why. So you knew they already wanted yeah. to work on this, and so it was yeah. easy to scope a yes, project. Yes, yes, well, for the reference and uh, For the reference purpose, I uh, Actually, that's why I'm collaborating with the research persons, mm -hmm. so that I can, they can uh, help us to uh, how to give the references, where, when I gave the references, where, uh, that's why. Um, in my field, the English Wikipedia article about soil mechanics is written by the same person, the same Californian professor who wrote one of the key reference textbooks about this field. So the expertise is there, and if and I think what I saw from that is we should start from the textbooks, which often cover a topic very well, and it's often a topic that um, Wikimedia projects haven't covered yet, and we try to start by building an abridged version of that on your target Wikimedia <coughs> project. So starting with the expert built lists. Um, do you think there's an, uh, the outreach component I think is really striking of what he loves butterflies, right? Because it's like, I know there are researchers doing this. Do, are there other places we should look for reaching out? Besides the books, like for people or for organizations or movements, how, what does that look like? Well, to make a pitch for our colleagues uh, uh, who aren't here, um, like I said, I came from the quality track, which I'm helping steward today. And we just had a talk from two people from Wiki Education, who, is, which is this uh, foundation in the US. And they're running courses for professionals, for scientists and academics um, on how to edit. And they're running beginning courses, but then they're running more advanced courses. Like if you've already edited an article, like here's how to do even more things with Wikipedia. So, that's certainly one approach. It's not the only approach. I have had a lot of luck with uh, professional organizations as well, reaching out to the professional organizations in the space. And um, every, every topic has a professional conference and a professional organization. They get very specialized. Um, and I have run editathons at professional conferences for microbiology, for physics, for geology. Um, make it a cocktail reception, make it fun, like get people to, to come and learn more. And um, people are eager to share their science. Uh, they are not eager to spend, you know, a hundred hours debating like naming conventions on the English Wikipedia, right? So. Um, it's about finding that balance but, in right, the right, right space. Right, right. Yeah. But I think um, professional organizations, yeah. Well, I think the librarians and professional institutions are the key allies. And I've had the same experience in mm. the field of um, civil engineering and geotechnical engineering as well. Yeah. Cool. Um, Did you have a thought on that? No. Okay. So there's uh, three questions I've queued and then I can add more. Yeah. I'll put a very basic question. So why are there even sanctions on this topic on English Wikipedia? Uh, why are there sanctions? Um, <laughs> I, to be totally honest, if there are any English Wikipedians in the room, I did not go so, so deep in the history, but it's a long-running thing, so it's kind of old. Um, it's about how people, 
it's about how people interact, right? Like people pushing points of view or saying like, this is a controversy and getting reverted. And so because it's a heated topic, it's in- It's only heated in the US. It's, so he, it's mostly it's heated in the US, I know, I know. This is a very American-centric view. So um, to the best of my understanding, it's about that. And the sanctions just mean like everyone is put on notice to be sort of more careful. Uh, uh, but it's worth looking at, yeah. Um, so there's a question. Yeah, yeah and a question, uh, answer for your question, yeah, TV, sure. because you were thinking, how can we do this across languages? And yeah. five years ago, Don Prendine, he taught me about uh, education in sustainable development. So I set up a wiki project yeah. on Meta, Wiki yeah. Project ESD, which is not only cross language but also yeah. cross project. Oh. So Commons, Wiki Books, and okay. Okay. so, okay. and it might not be perfect now because then we thought we had more time now okay. we now we might need more so but yeah. maybe there are parts there we can repurpose mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, 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 yeah. I just wanted to make a quick point um, and also kind of a call for action but on top of you know scientists and professionals mm -hmm. and all that we'd also try we'd also try to involve um, you know the Fridays for Future movement in our mm -hmm. respective countries like surely yeah we're all like me here uh, personally from Estonia, um, that we're all, um, you know, we're not experts, but if you do like an edit the film, make it fun, teach them how to use resources, how to reference properly, then that is a group that has a very, very vested interest currently in getting those articles on Wikipedia, so that we would have to stop arguing about, you know, climate change and stuff, like on our respective, you know, Facebook pages, right. we could just link an article. Something that made me think about this was the fact that I moderated the Fridays for Future Estonia's page uh, just a couple of days ago, and there was somebody there who was um, uh, it posed it as a criticism that whenever somebody says something that's you know skeptical of climate change, all they get back is a, is a ton of like references which have references which yeah. have references, and it's like yeah sure like if you were at all interested mm -hmm. you would read them all but mm -hmm. uh, I understand that a person might get frustrated by it so it would be much more convenient right. if I had a, like a proper Wikipedia article which would have additional references if you cared as much so I think those are groups really to tap but they also they obviously need, need like a little bit more support um, in terms of you know how to reference how to do this properly. Can I say one thing? So many of the problems that I found in English are not about skepticism and people saying, oh, it's wrong, it's uh, not true, it's true. Many of the problems are just like there's two articles that duplicate each other, or there's one article that has not been updated since 2015, or, you know, like problems we know how to fix, it's just, or like there's an article about solar panel technologies, but it's like spammed by the company that makes solar panels. Mm. Things like that are a big problem. So in addition to Good. climate skepticism. Did you all have responses too? No? Um, so I, I will kind of interject with uh, moderate. Uh, I, I'm queuing people up so if you get a thumbs up and I tell you I, I'm keeping track of you. Uh, also, uh, a recommendation. So I was on uh, research uh, for the Wikimedia Foundation on organizers in the Wikimedia movement. Uh, that will be published in three or four weeks. And one of the recommendations we make in that research is to actively recruit activists into the Wikimedia movement, as in addition to experts uh, in knowledge, because activists bring organizing skills. That also brings other challenges, right? Activists have other kind of, they, they have an agenda. Uh, so you have to help them acclimate to the movement. But we've done this successfully in uh, gender rights, uh, LGBTQ spaces, human rights. Uh, there are lots of models in the movement for this. So it's something to consider as we approach the set of issues. Yeah. I, <clears throat> kind of wanted to do a similar point as you did uh, regarding the environmental movement because I think it's easy when we talk about these things to have from a natural science perspective and technology perspective to miss all the social aspects of the of the transition that is needed uh, to, to fight the climate crisis and I think that it's uh, just as important, just as it's really important to have the good technical scientific information about the processes behind <coughs> climate change, we also have to have the good social science information regarding like social tipping points and uh, activist movements and, and environmental organizations, especially since 
I, I, I would say, especially in countries outside of the US, maybe they are not trying to distort the picture regarding the science itself, but regarding the movement. So, for example, there is a lot of misleading or false statements regarding the Fridays for Future movement and Greta Thunberg. And I think that if those articles were up to date and balanced and, and uh, scientifically founded, then that would go a long way in my, uh, getting a better understanding amongst people for these uh, environmental movements. And of course, that's something that, that we in the movements ourselves, I'm, I'm also part of the environmental movement here in Sweden, uh, could, could help with as well. But I think also it's important, uh, especially perhaps when it's uh, children organizing, that we don't just go in and say, oh, this is the thing that you have to do, or try to exploit people and say that it's your responsibility to update your Wikipedia page or whatever, but simply offering people a chance if they want to. I think it's really important. So we only have a few more minutes, and I have a lot of people who just fire. Okay, so uh, kind of going along with the last uh, comment, um, I think that there needs to be uh, an effort to look at the origins of disinformation or misinformation. And uh, on articles about these people or these media sources, there, there need to be uh, refutes to the claims that they make. And uh, there should be links to the, the articles about the scientific facts, particularly in the case of the US. Um, on the end. Yeah. Um, yeah, so for me, this, this talk about the climate change one is really resonating, and I'm going to talk to you afterwards more. But when I looked at it as a Wikipedian, I got really stuck into this issue of global warming versus climate change. And then we had lots of discussions on the talk page, and I just when you look at all the articles that submit, some of them are talking about global warming mitigations on climate change. If we could get that part right, and I think it should be climate change should be the term, not global warming. Well, then look at the page views, though, right? Yeah, but that, there's no issue. But I think until we get that sorted out, it will be hard to do all the rest. So are we going to call it global warming or climate change? To be fair, mo uh, groups like Art and Feminism have had much better success doing the whole space around the topic, um, and often there are way more page views to the auxiliary content than the core topics. Uh, so just to put that out there as an uh, opportunity. And to say, to tie all of our talks together, I think one thing that is missing is, like, you're talking about environmental engineering, Derek, right? That includes like everything we know about as a mitigation strategy, right? Like every engineering project, every planned engineering project, every technology, um, butterflies, like not just butterflies, but all species in the world, right? Affected by the climate crisis. Um, like when I say there's 1,500 articles, there's there's either 1,500 articles or like five million articles. Like, and we have to figure out exactly what we are including in this big tent. So I would think about that. Well, yeah. um, my comment to that is yeah. if we, we are spending too much time debating whether we should call it climate change or, or um, uh, global warming and, and where we should draw boundaries in, when in fact where we should focus is getting more good overview articles on the slightly narrower but still broad topics of science and, and specialism in, and policy into availability. Um, how much time do we have for? None. None. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, time for one more comment, I think. Yeah. Um, Quick. I want uh, to say something about multilingualism, mm -hmm. especially in, uh, maybe the um, butterfly project is very good in this. Um, I think the is it only in English? No, it's in Bengali. Oh, in Bengali. Uh, and in English. And English. Okay. And. Uh, now we are trying to um, translate in Ashami's language. Okay, so uh, it yeah. shapes to be multilingual, multilingual. because uh, of I think the facts um, on climate change are um, more or less uncontested, uncontested. But um, how to reach to uh, to the environment, to to the groups, that is micropolitics, and micropolitics to to shape micropolitics not only in world commerce activism, is um, of course all, also language. And language, um, it's language between native languages and language also used as a lingua franca. 
And using language as a lingua franca is also maybe for the people, for the native speakers to behave different mm -hmm. as for the people um, who are doing it as a second language. And these, these things can be um, negotiated. And I think uh, for this, uh, it's, it's very, very important to, to do this multilingual um, and multicultural. multicultural. Thank you. Um, I, I think we are done with time, so uh, thank you very much to the panel. This is a great conversation. We should keep it going, please. Thanks, everyone.